In this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of discuss the journal entry related to payroll expense. So when we think about the journal entry related to payroll, it can be one of the more confusing payroll or more confusing journal entries in general. The one related to payroll expense typically being the most confusing of the payroll journal entries and the one that's most common. It's important to, to note those or it's good to work the payroll journal entry one because it's really good practice to uh, know how to record journal entries because it's a bit longer of a journal entry. And two, it gives us a, an idea of how to record um, the payroll tax and how it's actually going to affect the accounts that will be uh, affected. And three, because most people that work in payroll or a lot of times, you know, depending on where we work in payroll, people don't understand the journal entry. They understand tables. They understand how to calculate the payroll tax. Don't really understand what it means typically in terms of what's going to be the impact and effect on the financial statements, on the accounts to the financial statements, on the accounting equation, assets, liabilities, and equity. And that can be a huge advantage to know that. And we can see that and find what that will be by recording the journal entry. So the journal entry will, will typically come from the register. So we'll typically have a, a register per pay period. And that'll give us a basically a table of what happened in terms of the um, the pay period. Now we, we could record a, a a journal entry for each employee, but we're just going to think of it in sum, meaning we're going to look at the the register and look at the gross check for all employees, and then we will look at uh, the withholdings for all employees, and then the net check for all employees, and see how then we would construct and create a journal entry related to that information. It's also important to note that uh, whether we do the payroll in uh, in-house in our company in the system that we are using or if we uh, outsource the payroll in some way to an outsourcing company like a paychecks or, or an ADP, then we're still going to have to record the payroll in some way uh, and so it's it's useful to know what that process will be. We'll, we'll have to deal with payroll and look it up and deal with it whether we insource outsource payroll or not. So um, and just another good reason to, to look at the payroll journal entry. So once we have that information from the register, uh, we could start to build our, our journal entry. Now, if we think about the, the most simple type of payroll journal entry, it would simply be like if we didn't have all the rules and withholdings that we needed um, by legislation and law now, if payroll was just a simple handshake and says, we're gonna, I'm going to pay you, you know, $1,000 every week or something like that then the payroll journal entry would be just like any other expense. It would be very easy. Uh, in other words, we would just say we're going to pay someone cash and credit cash at the point of payment, and we would debit uh, payroll tax expense. It would be just like paying the telephone bill or something like that. be very easy, but it's not so easy because there's a whole lot of laws and regulations related to payroll, and the employer is typically the one who kind of is forced legally to be more like the police person in terms of payroll taxes, more of the regulator, because the IRS knows they have more control uh, they, over the, the over the employer, uh, and so therefore the employer has more responsibility to um, to report uh, withholdings, things like withholdings, even though they're really the employee's responsibility. That's what's going to confuse the process here. So when we construct the journal entry, we'll start kind of from the same spot. We're going to say, okay, the gross earnings are what they actually earned. That's what they actually earned, gross earnings. Just like if we were to use our simple journal entry, we're just gonna debit gross earnings because it's an expense. So we're gonna debit payroll tax, payroll expenses, not taxes, payroll expenses, debit for uh, total earnings from the register. That's the same. Uh, we're gonna credit cash or payroll liability depending on if we're paying it at the point of processing or not. I'm just gonna say cash so that we can think of it as similar to that normal journal entry. But we don't know what the amount is, or I'm not going to think about the amount yet. I'll do that last. That'll be the last thing we'll get to. We'll construct the journal entry in a similar way as seen on the register, meaning gross pay minus all the deductions, including uh, payroll tax deductions. So uh, therefore, we're going to start with the, the uh, uh, wages expense, and then we're going to then credit all the, all the stuff that we take out of wages expense. So we're going to take out of wages expense the employee portion of the um, employee portion of taxes, payroll taxes. So employee payroll taxes include federal income tax, FIT, social security tax for the employee portion, 
and Medicare tax from the employee portion. Now we will have already calculated these hopefully from the register. So we're just going to pull those numbers from the register. We're going to credit our journal entry for those amounts, those amounts that we are removing from the paycheck, those amounts that on our register are part of the component to get from gross pay to net pay. Then on top of that, we, we may have some state taxes, SIT, state income tax, uh, and local taxes. We, we won't spend a lot of time here on that. We're going to focus in on the federal taxes. States taxes will typically mirror in many ways the, the federal taxes. So once we know what type of tax we're talking about, then we can apply it to whatever state regulation is in place. Uh, then we, we could also remove anything that's going to be uh, like voluntary type of, of uh, deductions which could include things like if there's a retirement plan of some kind like a 401k plan being the most common or uh, if there's a cafeteria plan some kind of health insurance uh, uh, payments that could be taken out uh, and those typically are going to be voluntary meaning uh, we're given the option of the employee to put into a, a 401k plan typically a huge benefit because it lowers the taxable wages at, at the point of payment of the 401k typically so that's nice and uh and the cafeteria plan uh so those are optional ones and then there could be things like a garnishment or something where we where we are required by say a court order to take money directly from the employee paycheck and pay it to whoever the court told us to pay it to and there could be something like union dues also or something like that that we're going to pay out all those that we're going to withhold whether whether it be a 401k plan whether it be a cafeteria plan whether it be garnishments that we have to remove are going to be some type of liability account. So we're going to credit a liability account for each of those numbers represented on the uh, payroll register. Uh, so we'll have a credit for all of those. And then finally, our last account is going to be a cash account. That's going to be the cash that's going to come out or a liability for payroll liability. We're going to use cash here and um and that'll be the net check so that's kind of like the idea of the net check that's going to be that's going to be what actually came out of the bank account for this time period and that'll be the debit of payroll expense minus all of the liabilities that we put in place including social security medicare federal income tax withholding if there's any 401k plan the uh cafeteria plan if we have to pay the union if we have to pay uh garnishments or anything like that and that'll be the that'll be the credit that actually comes out and that number should then match what's on our payroll register for the net check so that's in essence going to be our our journal entry and it should mirror the calculation for the payroll register now what's going to be the effect of this journal entry on the trial balance we know that uh, the the debit to payroll expense is going to increase expenses and an increase to expense will decrease net income so expenses go up, net income goes down, and then all the other accounts are typically, well, then cash goes down, of course, if we paid cash or payroll liability would go up if we had not at this point, and then we'd pay cash later. And then all the liabilities would then go up. So so the other, all those liabilities would go up reflecting the fact that we owe this money. And that's important to note because clearly when we record the expense, we recorded a gross, all the expense. We didn't record an expense equal to the net check. Uh, that we paid we record an expense equal to the gross check and that's because we don't get to keep the money we've got to pay the money to whoever and we don't really owe the money the employee in theory kind of owes the money so we have to pay the money whoever we agreed to pay on behalf of the employees so that's why we we report really gross earnings on the expense side and then we pay for the employees and uh, so that can be confusing because when we think of payroll tax expenses on the um, financial statements, they're not payroll. They're 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 only going to include the employer portion. Note that we don't have any payroll tax expense account recorded on uh, our financials from this journal entry. The payroll tax expense will be recorded when we record the employer portion of payroll tax of payroll taxes. When we record the employee journal entry, we're just recording all expenses, whether they be going to the employee or to the whoever the employee owes, including the government, as payroll expense. 
because they're really earnings by the employees. Whoever they're going to um, is, is, is different. So we're reporting as the expense whatever was earned, not who they're, who they're going to.